Now, as the Premier has indicated, and I've talked about it a lot, uh, we know that uh, traditionally in the past, uh, property uh, funded about 60% of education costs and the government grant was about 40%. It was 40-60. We've moved, uh, because we've put significant dollars into funding education, uh, we've moved back to about a 65-35 split right now. And our goal when we changed uh, how we set up the property uh, tax mill rates was we were trying to get to about a 60-40. So we're a little better than that, and uh, because the mill rates have not changed, uh, we have not taken into consideration uh, you know, in, increased costs of contracts, uh, increased enrollments. Uh, those have not been passed on to the share of education property tax. So in the future, and again, that would not occur any sooner than the mill rates that would be in place for 2016, but that would be a, uh, another budget that would determine that. So why float that idea or that possibility, you know, days or weeks before the budget? I mean, surely you must have had some idea by the week or two before the budget what was going to be in it. The answer to that is no. No. All things were on the table as we moved towards basically the day that we were going to go to print. We were looking at what kind of tax changes should we make, if any. And the easy one is, uh, is an education property tax because, uh, as I said in my remarks, uh, one mill across the entire province to uh, not only the residential and agricultural and uh, commercial and resource assessments produces about $110 million. So if we'd have raised the mill rate by one mill or two mills or anything like that, which were discussions through January, February and, and into March, uh, we, could, we could have changed those mill rates and the decision was uh, that we would control spending rather than increase the mill rate.